There is no better study of Walton's philosophies in vivid motion than a man I spent some days with on the Stour River in Kent, a Sir John Swire of Selling. He greeted me dressed in three-piece tweeds and a light blue tie. I'm certain he wore a tie every day. This was a picture of Sir John that I had in mind, and I don't think it would be inappropriate to say that a man dressed in sweats and a t-shirt would have been a disappointment. For you cannot have a name like Sir John Swire and greet the world as a couch potato. Fish rose just there. Just there? Yes. I don't know whether he's going to come again. Right below the willow? Yes, just under the willow there. There's something that floats a little better? Or? I think uh, they're not going to be very particular, I don't think. I think something like that would probably be all right. If we see a splashy rise, I'd change to a mayfly. Do you see where the willow, there's a branch just above, about six inches over the top of the water? Okay. If you can float it down under that, <laughs> I'll try. I'll give you a very difficult one, you see. It's the great advantage of not fishing yourself because you don't, um, no one can criticize you. Step in here. That's all right, take the stick. Sir John spent part of his youth with irons on his legs, a result of meningitis. As a schoolboy, while attending the prestigious public school Eton, he was excused from athletics. Instead, he watched birds and fly fished. Now, as one of the wealthiest men in England, he has remained a student of the outdoors. No, I could probably make a cast in there. I started fishing for tiny little fish, little gudgeon and things like that, small perch. I'm going to go downstream and see if I can find you an easier one. OK. Right here. And it's rather a pity that nowadays so many people start off insisting on catching great big trout, or some people even their first fish is a salmon. I think it's a great pity if they don't build up catching bigger and bigger fish. You won't believe it, but I got it. Did you? Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Oh, how big was it? Oh. Very nice fish. Yeah, 12 inches. Oh, no good. Oh, well, that's great. The English upper class have a reputation for hiding behind their traditions, eccentricities, and clever catchphrases. But I liked Sir John immediately, found him humble, and, well, I'm full of shit. He obviously had what Walton described as qualities that make a good angler, an inquiring, searching, and observing wit. I think that was a chub, actually. Oh, a chub. Oh! No, it wasn't a chub, it was a chart. Yeah. You like that? Why? That's all right, yeah. Is there any place to step down here? It looks like it's about six feet deep. It is, it's quite deep. So I was fishing with my father-in-law and I went right in to land a fish for him yeah. and all that was left was my hat floating on top of the water. The thing is, the big fish go there, they chase the small ones away. When you catch a big fish there, you come back two days later, there's another one there. But oh, the next one moves in. They move in, yes, the next competitor. It's like life, really. I don't think that Walton was a, the dull old s clerical stick that he makes out. Because no. he, had all, he had all these very intellectual yeah. men of action friends. And I think if he was yeah. friends with a person like Cotton, who was yes, quite. dynamic and enjoyed yes. having fun and gambling, he couldn't yes. have been too they stiff. He couldn't have been too, <laughs> too uh, fundamentalist. Yeah. He? I didn't feel comfortable telling Sir John outright that I admired him. So instead, I thanked him as graciously as I knew how for his company, his conversation, the rosé wine, the homemade watercress soup, and of course, the fishing.